Uh, <coughs> some of you will know that um, Lancaster's taken over the Work Foundation, used to be Industrial Society, posh place in London, Westminster. Will Hutton, up until recently, has been the boss and he's still associated with it. He was a Cary Cooper uh, conquest, if you like. Cary got the deals. They, they had a, a, a pension black hole, um, but they declared themselves bankrupt. We bought up the remains for a couple of quid. Uh, whatever body it is that you paid off the pensions, they've got 80 or 90% of their pensions. Um, and we have the Work Foundation. Cary, bless him, stitched it up in three weeks for a number of London companies after it. We've only got the first of ten committees in three weeks. So. There you go. Um, uh, and we have to have a do there in the autumn, don't we? Well, you will get invited. Uh, we are kind of following on from the management theory and work conferences we ran quite a few years ago. Uh, <coughs> um, but it, Will Hutton's written a book called The State We're In, uh, and uh, <coughs> I'm picking up on that. And what and state, that's on the next slide. Uh, state can mean, and I would tag it in both sense, state as in the institution, the government, all the rest of it. But it can also mean the condition, the social, the cultural conditions that we're in. And I, I think uh, in this context that means in both those senses. Um, uh, we've, there's a lot of talk these days about the knowledge economy, uh, which follows on from um, the, the industrial uh, manufacturing, industrial revolution type thing. <coughs> As I think I said, management came in with the um, <coughs> with uh, manufacturing and all the rest of it mid uh, mid 19th century. And of course, it still goes on. More of that than on, you know. And um, India, China, and other places. Uh, we had a, a colleague, an economic historian, who went to India and said it's just like Charles Dickens. Whereas other places like Singapore and increasingly parts of China or India. Are jumping over that into the high high tech, high added, added value stuff. Interesting uh, game. So you're jumping over, for example, there's no point in having a copper wire based telephone system over a big country when you can have satellites and stuff. You might as well skip that. So in all other ways, um, some some developing countries, brick countries, are jumping over it. Others are doing the kind of low low added value, cheap labour sort of stuff, or or both. Um, but I want to argue, so um, <coughs> knowledge economy follows on from that, and that's the, <coughs> the return to leadership is partly because uh, management works when you own the means of production. It's the, it's the, it's the you're right. Yeah, just a far of conjure, could you expand on that briefly? Yeah, I'll come, I'll come on to that, yeah. Um, uh, he's obviously used the word spirituality, or meaningfulness, <coughs> it's all the stuff about meaningfulness at work, as well as pay and blah, blah, blah. Carries up again, uh, health and well-being. Uh, uh, <coughs> but the knowledge economy, uh, <coughs> if you own the machine in the factory, the workers have to have access to it to add some value to a product and get a wage. The, uh, the Luddites, you remember, and Luddite is usually a term of derogatory term of people who resist progress. They were people who, who ran, uh, made cotton and wool stuff in the cottage, in their back bedrooms or top bedrooms and they went in to try and smash up the machine. So it's quite logical and rational from their point of view. Um, and I'm told, uh, even in America, um, only, well, and they define knowledge workers, which isn't easy, um, but only 20% of, of the working population are knowledge workers. The rest are still flipping burgers in McDonald's or hoovering hotel lobbies or holding wheels on pools or the you know, like. Uh, <coughs> having said that, and that's, you know, so it's, Hundreds of years ago, we had the Industrial Revolution, tens of years ago. I think Drucker was the first to write about the Knowledge Revolution, right as far ago as 1954, I think. Um, that's an man. He, uh, quick, quick joke, Drucker has a, has a quote, which is kind of expensive academics. He said, in the old days, surgery was done by barbers who had the tools to do it, the scalpels. The professor sat with his back to the barber and the patient reading the instructions for the operation in Latin, which of course the barber didn't understand. Um, <coughs> the barber and the patient, <coughs> the suit before anaesthetics, shared a bottle of gin. Um, the, professor, the professor drank a bottle of port. Um, and if the, if the operation went wrong, it was the barber's fault. And if it was a success, it was to the credit of the professor. 
and in either case the professor gets the bigger fee <laughs> as it should be <laughs> um, yeah so no, no sooner although the kind of technology <coughs> economy is still kicking in um, <coughs> culture, which is meaningfulness or spiral culture if you want to use the spiritual or spirituality word <coughs> um, so for example I see a few Nike t-shirts or the like uh, but if you, if you wear that kind of brand, it's, it's part of your identity. Uh, it costs one pound fifty to make in or fifty p to make in China, one pound fifty to ship it over and deliver it and sell it to us. But the other forty eight pounds fifty or whatever it is, forty one pounds fifty, you're paying for the image, the brand. Um, of course, you can cheat and get a fake one. I used to have a fake euro watch that cost about thirty Hong Kong dollars. Um, it worked quite well for several years. What's the business? Um, <coughs> uh, Karen like, accused me of doing my inaugural lecture in a fake Armani suit. Well, it wasn't a Armani suit; it was a Marcus Spencer suit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but and they say shopping malls are the cathedrals of the 21st century. You know, Trapper Park down the road. You're not going there to get your basic food and clothing. You're there looking for that new Nike or Adidas or whatever image. Um, it's a social place, it's an identity seeking place. There are almost as many cafes and shops for social networking as there are um, <coughs> shops that are actually selling, selling goods and so on and so forth. And I said this, I don't give me to the chocolate center in Manchester, it's typical Manchester, mega brash, you know, with great Grecian urns on the roof. And I did this for the, for the lecture at Manchester Business School last year. And it turned out I was the director of the chocolate center. Well, I said, you've got to go there at least once. <laughs> just to see it. <coughs> and we had a laugh about it after I said, I'm not going to destroy your business because they have multi million numbers of visitors a year. <coughs> Probably not. They've <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so got one of those super squarish Mercedes sports cars in the, on the hallway that belong to one of the directors of the You know, very Manchester, very branch. Um, uh, you know, people wearing shell suits and all the kind of people you see going through. Manchester Airport on their trips to the top of the and so on. And sorry, as, um, so as <coughs> individuals, customers, employees were all interested, not instead of money and pay and all that stuff, but as well, meaningfulness. So uh, the DVC is a popular organisation to work for, second most favourite of academia. My as British Aerospace, which is a comparative study, <coughs> is the other way around. I met uh, there was a chap on the train. Uh, it wasn't you, <laughs> I don't think Chris had a few beers, I'm sure he was going from London to Wharton and he, he said I'll be able to tell my grandchildren I made the triggers for the bombs on both sides of the Iraq war Okay. <laughs> and uh, I have a theory and I think it holds up that the more you're asking people in organisations to do things they don't think you want to do, the more performance management you need and the more you want people, well people are doing things they don't want to do anyway so you have pretty heavy duty or they have pretty heavy duty General Electric based sort of um, talent management lease for the top 300, is it? And they don't do quite as uh, severely as DD does a picking low hanging fruit, which means fire the people in the bottom of the tank, I don't think. So you say I'm forced distribution? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the bottom 10%, yeah. yeah. maybe a bit less work. Yeah. yeah. The Whereas the BBC, <coughs> it does have performance management, usually honoured in the breach. I think, am I right? Yeah, I mean, most people despise what we're talking about and I really love what we're What do you say? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And for, for several years, uh, BBC spent an absolute fortune on the Indian development. Probably the bachelor is in places like that. You know, I'll never be mixed up in that and all the rest of it. Yeah, so I think, I think that, that, that works. But meaningfulness is, is, is kind of that stuff. And these things kind of, um, and before, before um, the knowledge, sorry, before it, um, manufacturing, we had agriculture, and before that we had hunter gathering. And if you take farming, I mean, despite all the noble attempts at organic farming, it's still largely industrialised. And they say, each, so each of these stages um, territorialise the, the other ones. So farming, they say the only difference between a farm and a factory is in a factory the goods go through the machine. And then on a farm, the machine goes over the goods, tractor pulling the stuff. <coughs> and nowadays, probably that the spray is regulated from a satellite from Monsanto and a server somewhere in 
California or whatever to, to regulate the amount of spray. Um, before long, they'll have a self steering chat tractor and the tractor driver's probably on his mobile phone. They are Sorry? They are yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. The driver's still sitting there. Yeah. A bit like tube trains. And tra you know, they're just there to reassure somebody or other. And he's probably logging or visiting porn sites on his mobile phone or whatever it is. Um, so these things. And, uh, and now farming is becoming a, a meaningful. Issue. They tell me that the, uh, the, the most uh, financially rewarding um, crop for farms these days is caravans. <laughs> oh, well, you've got a caravan. Oh, yeah, I've got a caravan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be identified, though. <laughs> 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 Too late. I won't make any such more time for that joke in the Black House. No, no, it's in um, uh, Dad's Army. When he, the German says, What's your name? And the boss says, Don't tell him, Pike. <laughs> 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 so I won't reveal the name, John Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so meaningfulness. Um, the end is that United is um, I, I believe in a combination of Darwin, ad adaptation, etc. Maturana Valera, if you remember, autopoiesis, which I can never spell, which is that we, had, we you know, what do we do in face with a shortage of water? You can't say biting weight shows because we don't have the on <laughs> Well, we, we dig wells, we build dams, we change the environment to, to maintain our... Whereas an amoeba shrivels up into a little bit of jelly. It's a happy amoeba if the water comes back in time. If it doesn't, it's literally dust. Well, I believe in a kind of co-evolution co combination of those. But on top of that, I think Gregory Bateson, you'll remember, possibly. There is an exam. <laughs> um, he said, we, we also move to be part of larger units of survival, you know, individual family tribe. And that gets kind of interesting when you get a long way along with that. So we used to have the Cold War, the Iron Curtain, the USSR, America and the West. Uh, that's come down because basically America won that one. So then we had to invent, did we? So we could then just Al-Qaeda and terrorism. We kind of need an enemy. But it gets kind of dangerous because that's where you actually, you know, we could have had the nuclear holocaust, I imagine, in the Cold War. You know, Dr. Dr. Strange Love, was it, all that scenario? Um, as a youngster, you know, when Carrie Cooper was one and I was 20, uh, <coughs> I joined CND and went on a couple of Auburn Austin marches. So I was a bit worried about it. I was like, would I get free sex? But it didn't work out that way. More like, <laughs> <laughs> like a scout camp, actually. <laughs> um, uh, so dear old Mazda, which I'm sure you've learned to be critical about, um, and I think it kind of works, but not as a hardwired thing, but certainly as a cultural thing in America. You, you can't self-actualize unless you've got a full stomach, whereas if you're a Zen Buddhist, you just need a handful of rice today, I'm not sure where it'll come tomorrow, and you can self-actualize. Um, I mean, that's about the conditions that you need for meaningfulness. But if, uh, and where this fits into my argument, um, uh, is that if we can only self-actualize on the American model, then we're still going to, in ecological terms, consume a lot of resources. And if we can be more zen-like, uh, we can do that without uh, walking so heavily on the earth in the kind of ecological sense. <coughs> now, developing countries, the rich countries, I guess, and particularly the East, more Eastern ones, you might think are close to their spiritual roots, uh, which are different from ours. Um, some of the Muslims, you will notice that the Arab banks didn't get caught by the credit country because they have different principles around taking interest. Except in this country, as I think is the right, is the co-op bank, which was unscathed because they, don't, they have different principles, but nonetheless, as long as they keep them out of trouble, you know the banks, don't you, John, again? Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Um, so there's a lot to play for, uh, and whether we can have the kind of leadership in currencies, whether we can... Um, learn as much from the developing countries in terms of that. And th I think this is in, in the balance. Um, um, and this is implications for individuals, or in the state. And is there a new world, real role for leadership? Um, so I said, I, I might do this lecture if I'm allowed to do as a kind of victory uh, lecture. That's what you do at the end of 
being a professor, I'm retiring at the end of this year. Email me on that email earlier on if you want my work offer, by the way. Um, a bit of marketing, that's why I'm dressed up smart, not for you lot. <laughs> so I wouldn't embarrass you here as well. So this is the, the optimistic view. Um, uh, if we can take the right view of, um, <coughs> of, uh, of the, uh, well, Charles Carson, the founding uh, vice chancellor of the university, is a Quaker economist, wrote a penguin book called Wealth. And he points out that wealth used to mean well-being. It's only recently that we've turned it into the kind of Harry Enfield, loads of dosh character sort of image. Um, uh, so it's play, reclaiming well-being uh, in its original meaning. <coughs> so as far as going to a social media, to customers, etc. That's the stuff I've done. As I say, there's quite a movement in HR, isn't it, towards meaningfulness and, and the rest of it. So I'm saying you well out of the schedule for them, these can play and so on. <coughs> so what about lots of methods in that sort of garden for their So this is the, uh, the, uh, the growing economies of Western. And I think this <coughs> is the trunk of another kind. Uh, if we can learn as much from the East as we um, recommend, uh, there's lots of it. I mean, there's lots of that. Those countries are Westernizing fairly rapidly. If you take clothing, with a few exceptions, like, like Arab um, gowns, or whatever they're called, um, it's the Western business suit, isn't it? You know, for women as well as for men, quite often. <coughs> this is a cultural thing. And management, or management leadership, corporate field, is I think probably the thing that's standardising cultures. Um, so although Hofstede is not wrong, we're now getting a kind of cross-cutting international business culture. You get the Middle Atlantic cuisine, Middle Atlantic, you know, a holiday inn in Frankfurt, London, Tokyo. It's pretty much the same, isn't it? You can wake up and not know where you are uh, just by looking at the room. And probably um, <coughs> um, one thing is, well, I went to a seminar on the business school on evolutionary psychology, Nigel Nicholson. Uh, it's the Harvard Business Review paper. His thing about leadership, by the way, is um, <coughs> the old debate of our leaders born or made, the evolutionary answer. Evolutionary psychology said lots of our habits were, were kind of ingrained in us when we were hunter gatherers on the plains of Africa for millions of years before, um, before we got into agriculture and the rest of stuff like that. They say the will to the will to lead is largely innate, but the ability to do it well can be learned. And there's some physiology behind that because the, emo the amygdala, the emotional part at the top of your spine, is earlier. It's the emotional part. Uh, and that's fairly hard wired. Whereas the outer cortex, which is the more cognitive part, is where you can rationally uh, <coughs> you know, decide how, how to play what you're driven to do. Um, American Airlines has a slogan which is called Recruit for Attitude, Train for Skill, which is the same thing applied for us, I think it makes, makes sense. Um, but there's this market, there was a marketing guy, he said, well basically there's four or five underlying urges which all marketing sells to, one of which they call conspicuous greed, with no better as conspicuous consumption. Um, that's having things not because of their kind of functional value, a big flashy car, a house with fancy stuff, not because you need it, um, but because it makes you feel good. Uh, we did a project with Cumbria Police and the, the chiefs all drove bloody great um, Range Rovers on the pretext that one day they might have to give the Queen a lift, which hardly ever happened if you could hire one for a day if you did. Um, and then the, the peasants, you know, the middle peasant had uh, bought the Volvos and the bottom peasants had lots of lasters and so on and so forth. So that was the, the the car was to do with status, not sort of functionality and need. Um, <coughs> and the guys who drove the Volvos insisted on having the petrol ones because they said they were fast, which they are in terms of top speed, but the diesel were a fast bit yeah. more torque and the middle range where it really matters if you have a 99% of police work. Uh, so they're all at it. Um, <coughs> but if China and the rest of India take off on conspicuous greed, uh, we're done for basically. Uh, because you know, if every hand in China and India and the rest have a, a fridge and a car, um, they can really break up the fridge and it's, it's the old kind of um, coolant. 
literally the ozone layer is done for. Um, uh, so that this is a a big cell for sex. If we set cell goods on sex, we still to generate some carbon dioxide. <laughs> not my psychologist, but not nearly as much as a <coughs> sort of range rover. <laughs> and we just heard that we have Rolls Royce car. China's taken over the biggest cars for Rolls Royce. If I showed you that without giving you any clues and asked you where it was, where would you said it was is Los Angeles. Yeah, it's China. And I'm told it's eight or nine or twelve lanes wide, and I gather it's fifteen or twenty miles long. So. So if they all do that, we're heading for trouble. And I'm told there's more more tarmac now in China than there is square miles in the UK. And I think by several times. Uh, it's a big place. Yeah. Um, there we have it. So if it's not too late, and it depends on whether you believe in tipping points and all that stuff, which is hard, <coughs> and if we're beyond the tipping point already, <coughs> we're done for as I think Lawson believes. <coughs> um, so you don't bother with the eco stuff, um, <coughs> but we might be with the right kind of leadership, which um, um, yeah. <coughs> with the right kind of leadership, which <coughs> combines the scientific and the human relations, we might be able to steer our way through this one. End of story. Oh, comment. Agree, disagree, implications <laughs> for leadership development. <laughs> <laughs>